The discipline is essential in the spiritual aspirant, part 13, Sri Muragana, translated and presented by Robert Butler. Punjavedalavasapatayanuire <laughs> Simane Arul Simane Ninjile on the Vedala Gandai in a car Bande Adaya Change away under Rushimane Ninjile on the Veda Lagande in a column on the day So today's scenarios all deal with self-control or self-restraint. So we will start with um, Neri 38. Hanan, please. <coughs> Sorry, trying to unmute it. Arivinam chala adakkam peride. Unarvilam chala ulkam peride. Read it again. Arivinam chala adakkam peride. Unarvinam chala ulkam peride. Self-restraint self is much more important than knowledge. How we act is more important than what we think. Yeah. How we act is more important than what we think. Um, Robert had a nice comment on this. Please go ahead and read your comment. Robert. Whilst believing we are exercising our own free will, we're unthinkingly controlled by our Bishaya Vasanas, our inherent tendencies and conditionings, which manifest as desires and fears, fixed ideas and prejudices and so on. 
Self-restraint is to refrain from action even when the impulse to do so is very strong. If we act in this way, we give ourselves the opportunity to turn away from the thought that is prompting our impulsive reaction and to turn inward, I would, with conscious self-attention before reacting. It may be only a split second, but it will be enough to transform the entire tenor of our reaction. I want to explain that a bit. Yeah. Uh, when we react to a stimulus, we have a, a whole lifetime's worth of conditionings that are affecting us. But these can be burnt up by the, the light of self-attention, the light of being. So if we make it a point always to stop before we react, we can, we can begin to counteract those we share busters and not do, it's not just that we react badly, it's just that that strengthens future reactions. So it's an infinite circle. Uh, there are things you can do. Sometimes people find it very difficult myself um, when I was young I was pretty out of control in many ways and also I had a very bad back scoliosis and I discovered something called the Alexander technique now at this time I had no chance of going to India or anywhere I, my back was bad most of the time could hardly get out of bed some days drank quite a lot so I'm smoked and um, so my flatmate and I, we discovered uh, something called the Alexander Technique, which is a way to... Well, what you have to understand is that most of your actions are conditioned into your body by... Uh, um, musc it's almost a physical, muscular thing. Your body, in a way, physically drives your mental reaction. So the Alexander Technique, they, uh, they teach you to stop. Uh, it, it's... Uh, it's not a physical exercise. Uh, it's something whereby you can create that space which allows introspection and self-attention to occur. I'm just saying that because it helped me. It may not help others. But uh, after 18 months of doing this technique, I was able to travel. I went to India and I found Bhagavan. So in my case, that was something uh, that was of help. And I, I think people should accept some people are unable, totally unable to control their reactions. Uh, they need to find other kinds of help, if available. This is not wrong and it's not bad either, but uh, you may not need it or you may, as I just mentioned it in passing. And you nailed that uh, beautifully. So, I mean, the best way to deal with all these vasanas is, is self-attention and to turn inward, eyeward with conscious self-attention before reacting. And that even, even even if it's just a few moments, it helps you. Wrong. It helps you, right? Yes. The fire dies down. Right. Beautiful. I mean, yeah. Often people say, well, I'll sleep on it. But you shouldn't need to take 12 hours to recover from a bad reaction. Or, you know, it can be done in a split second. But it's, it's just being aware. And continued self-attention will increase. So in, 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 the, in the end, it will be a split second. Uh, you recognize a spurious, bad, dangerous thought almost before it happens. It's in a way, it's almost not there. It's gone before, you know, it's gone before you, you can begin to react on it. But until then, you will go on following these errant pathways ad infinitum. Good. Thank you. Um, so now let's look at a few more nerys, which are um, in you know, which have the same theme as this one. Very 49. Anand, please. Aringyan, anartha anartha heduvana avesha unarchiye arave taan adakki alvadu mattu manri adan vasappattu oridamam ati jagradayaha nadandu kolla vendu. In real, veenaha pinbu kalivirakkam kolla neridam. In a way, Kuduman of a letter at the Hayore, Tavir Padukuda, and Alam and Alam. Want me to read once again? Please. Yeah. Aringen, Anatha Hetuana, Avesha Unarche, Arave Than Adakial with the Matamandre, Adan Vasapatoridamum, Adijagriahan at the Bullavendum. In rail, 
வீணாக பின்பு கழிவிரட்டம் கொள்ள நேரிடும் எனவே கூடுமான அளவு அத்தகையோரை தவிர்ப்பது கூட நலம் என்னலாம் Not only that, he should be able to extreme caution towards those who are under its control. Otherwise, he may needlessly come later to regret it. Therefore, he should take the attitude that the best plan is to avoid such people altogether as far as it is possible. Yeah. I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Uh, exactly right. That is going to produce a bad reaction in us. I don't think we need to explain that in any great detail. But um, perhaps sometimes it's not easy to recognize what is bad company for us. So anything that we're involved in, we should scrutinize it and decide whether we should maintain it or drop it, whether it's harmful to our spiritual progress. Exactly. And that will be different for everybody. Cycling may be great for somebody, for somebody else it might be... Uh, an unhealthy obsession where he, sit, he sits in the bedroom for 12 hours a day trying to beat other people on the internet. Somebody else might go for a nice country ride. So the same thing can have totally different, totally different psychological meanings for different people. So, um, the, the patience or the, the self-control is so important and in, in, I like it when he already says you may needlessly come later to regret it. Um, Needlessly, in the sense that this could have been avoided. All you had to do is um, just take a few moments, reflect on it, control it. Um, there is a um, Seneca, there's a philosopher by name Seneca, his quote comes to my mind. Um, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. So the greatest remedy for anger is delay. And that delay is when you use, um, you know, just delay per se is good, but if you could just use that delay, to, to do self-attention, as Robert mentioned earlier, that's even better. You know, you, now we know what to do. If I could just mention, this is not quite on topic, but uh, Seneca wrote to his friend Lucilius. That's how he did his teaching. Seneca <laughs> wrote essays to Lucilius. And he says, uh, Lucilius, wherever you go, you have to take yourself with you. Because Lucilius was saying he wanted to get away from Rome. It was all getting a bit hot and... And he, he said, wherever wow. you go, you'll have to take yourself with you, he says. Oh, wow. Mm. Yes, sir. No, we haven't heard that before. Yeah, thank you. Let's go to the next, Mary, 51. Anand? Adakka padada gudarai bole, adakka padada pechim, alai abatha kullakram. In a way, arpamam nekhira vidamal, அடக்கம் என்னும் கடிவாளத்தை என்றும் இறுக பிடிக்க வேண்டும் அடக்கப்படாத குதிரை போல அடக்கப்படாத பேச்சும் ஆளை ஆபத்துக்குள்ளாக்கும் எனவே அற்பமும் நிகழ்விடாமல் அடக்கம் என்னும் கடிவாளத்தை என்றும் இறுக பிடிக்க வேண்டும் Therefore, always draw tightly on the bit called self-control, never loosening your grip for a second. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> uh, because often we find that our actions are driven by speech, first of all, because once we put a foot in it and said something, we then embark on courses of action which follow from what we said. But if we don't say it, nobody's going to know what we thought. Nobody's going to say, ah, oh, you had that bad thought. You know, we get back there to it, it, what you do is a lot more important than what you think. Thoughts are, nobody can say what thought they're going to have. But if you're capable of turning away from that thought, it has no power over you whatsoever. No power whatsoever. Right. So this is ego control rather than self-control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. When you say self-control, it's referring to the ego here, right? Yes. Yeah, you control your ego. So, um, um, the, for this Neri, we also um, found a beautiful 
um, kural, meaning words, um, from sage through a lore. Um, do you want to read that, um, Robert? You could, you could read both of them in English. Ya kawarainu na kaka. Kawaka so ga par. Solil irikapat. Whatever else you fell to guard, guard your words, or else through a slip of the tongue, much misery will be felt. Again, we're back to the same thing. Uh, if you don't say anything, you have a chance to pull it all back and just be yourself. But once you've committed in action and in words, um, you embark on a path that you, you, it's very hard to turn back from. But in every moment, we, can, we, we have that decision to make. We can decide we can not be that ego. Right. Um, so let's go to uh, a couple more Neri's um, where he sort of consolidates this this principle here. Neri 54, Anand. Adakka tin mikka anigalam illai. Adakka tin mikka anigalam illai. Robert. There is no greater ornament than self-control. So he, he's just framing this in a different way. He really wants to make sure we get this because this is so important, right? There's no greater ornament than um, self-control. Um, and then finally, in area 68, Anand. Purumai Bhoshana. Purumai Bhoshana. Right. Patience is an adornment. Yeah. So finally, it says that patience is an adornment. Um, so patience, self-control, they're kind of two sides of the same thing, aren't they? Exactly right. Same coin. So that's why we brought it together here. Um, so th this and the previous one have the same meaning, right? Exactly. Well, right. Patience, patience results from self-control because what is patience? It's saying, no, I'm not going to react. I'm not going to follow this prompting this Vishaya Vasana if she's telling me to slap somebody's face or whatever it is or slam the door or you know storm out of the house we all do it or we've done it right. um so I um you know we thought of bringing this um verse from Apollo part two um where Bhagwan yeah, addresses the concept of self-restraint or self-control um, and he says, we should blend the following ingredients with the pulverized black gram. So he's basically giving a, a recipe, I mean, um, for, um, to make them um, apalams, um, which also called papadam. Um, and so in, in so he, he combines deep philosophy um, um, and he embeds it in, in on, uh, while explaining the pause of making an apalam. Um, so he says, these are the following ingredients that are necessary. The juice um, of the squire stock wine, which is satsanga, and cumin, which is sama, um, or tranquility, uh, calmness, um, pepper, which is dharma, and that is a self-restraint, um, and um, salt, which is uprati, and asafoetida, which is good vasana, um, in the heart. Um, so you see here, Self-restraint is um, one of the key um, requirements um, for, you know, pursuit of self-realization. So it is very important. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we, we wanted to just do a whole session just on this. Um, so we, that becomes a part of it. It's not just a discussion. I think everyone of us needs to go back and see, well, what is it that I can do differently in my life to practice this more and more? Um, because that is very important that we develop this and cultivate this. And I, I know most of us are there, but the more we can cultivate this, the better. And it will help us towards reaching our goal. Yes. I would just, I would just add to that, that why, why does he pick a poppadon? It's because unlike every other thing you would roll out, like a pancake or any kind of party, this is massively, massively 
rolled hard, mm. has to be rolled so hard it's almost like a sheet of plastic. It's tough. You put it in. You have to try to cook it. You have to put it into hot boiling oil. And so to make all these ingredients work, you need that combination, as Umberto said, of, of the uh, viragia, the inquiry, and, and the bhakti. Very, very, very intense. Because you could make you could make a chapati by just doing that. But to make a papadam, I've never tried to make one, but I believe it. It is very, hard. Very it's hard. Most, most families don't make it in their homes. It's, it has uh, to be so hard and thin. Right. And the dough, the dough must be tough to start with. So, yeah, to get it to get it into the you know sort of half a millimeter thick thin sheet requires incredible pressure. And this is the pressure that you know you we we need to bring ourselves to the soul, as it were. Right. And uh, go ahead, please, Anand. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah, the, what Robert said is uh, true. Uh, you know, people like me who are older, uh, we have in our household seen how difficult it is to make an apple. It's a major enterprise. You know, people call their neighbors, mostly ladies do this. You know, they, they call their neighbors to help because first thing, in those days, there was no mixie. So the mm. first thing is to have this long, you know, rod called ulakai, and then, you know, have it in a stone uh, <clears throat> with a dip and then pulverize the, the black gram, the ulundu. So that itself is, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. And then comes all the ingredients. Now this juice of a squash, stock wine is not easy to obtain. You have to really, you know, work, keep it, you know, ready with all that. So anyway, so that's one. The other uh, comment is the sama and dhamma, you know, equanimity and also self-control. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> retaining them, these two qualities, um, so that you don't, it, it becomes your uh, part and parcel of you, is uparati. Uparati is uh, to retain, uh, to maintain those two uh, before you, you know, uh, so then, then it becomes easier for you to go inward and then you know, do, uh, realize yourself. So. Right. Any other comments um, um, or personal reflections on this? I just remembered mm -hmm. that uh, when I was working, we once we had to go through this course called Seven Best Habits of uh, Successful People by Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. And the way he uh, defines responsibility is your ability to respond. Mm -hmm. So you're not... Uh, driven to respond to an event or a comment uh, by your emotional center. So again, the self-restraint is responsibility, your ability to respond. So I just made the connection just now. Right. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Yeah, this is Greg. Uh, first yeah. of all, it's really good to be here. I've been gone for a few weeks, but... Uh, uh, in considering all this, uh, I was reminded uh, of this thing Ramana said once. He said, in the world, there's ignorance and wisdom. But he said, they're both forms of ignorance. There is only one wisdom, and that is the self. And uh, how I relate that to all of this is... Uh, you know, whatever you think you may be saying or believing or what have you, if it's just a world, worldly kind of wisdom or ignorance is still ignorance. It's... Could you please speak up, Greg? I can oh, barely hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me better? Sorry. Yeah. 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 What, what I was saying, there is a saying by Ramana, uh, that he said in the world there's wisdom and ignorance and he said but they're both forms of ignorance there's only one wisdom and that is the self right and uh you know generally when you consider all these things about restraint and stuff uh that involves most often i would believe uh 
you know, worldly wisdom or ignorance, you know, from the self perspective, you know, that's the true, uh, well, the wisdom of the self is the true restraint, actually, because they're, uh, you know, these uh, separate things, separate selves and others uh, don't make, uh, don't exist and relationships between the selves don't exist in that way. And relationships generally entail fight, flight and freeze or something like that in some ways, which leads to, uh, you know, conflict of various kinds. So, you know, that's what I was thinking when I, you were talking about that, the uh, tie-in between self-restraint and all these things and the self. Anyway, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So with that comment of um, Greg, we will conclude the session.